Now we present Herbert Marshall as The Man Called X, the Saturday night feature on NBC's five-show festival of comedy, music, mystery, and drama. Brought to you by... Chesterfield, the cigarette that has for you what every smoker wants. Mildness plus no unpleasant aftertaste. The cigarette that brings you Bing Crosby and Bob Hope. By the makers of Anison for fast relief from pain of headache, neuritis, neuralgia. And by RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, first in television. Herbert Marshall as The Man Called X. Wherever there is mystery, intrigue, romance, in all the strange and dangerous places of the world, there you will find The Man Called X. Whoa, now, listen to this. Say, Bing, you got a minute? Oh, sure, Bob. I've got all the time in the world. Don't tell me you own that, too. Oh, never mind that stuff. Get to work with it. Okay. Folks, better tasting Chesterfield is the only cigarette that combines for you... Mildness with no unpleasant aftertaste. And you can prove that yourself. Just make our mildness test. Buy Chesterfields, then open them and enjoy that milder, mellow aroma. Now light one up, and you'll know Chesterfield's milder because it smokes milder. And Chesterfield leaves no unpleasant aftertaste. That fact has been confirmed by the country's first and only cigarette taste panel. Yes, mildness and no unpleasant aftertaste are what you and I and every smoker wants. Hurry up, Dad. Here comes the music. By Chesterfield, Chesterfield, the one that proves its case. Yes, Chesterfields are milder, milder, plus no aftertaste. Oh, ho, open a pack and give them a sniff. Then you'll smoke them. It is early evening in New York City. In the offices of the Bureau, high above Manhattan's teeming streets, two men are listening to a news broadcast. Now, as I've done for the past four weeks, I'm about to ask the big question. The question that has the people of Budapest, Prague, Warsaw, and Moscow laughing at these United States. And here it is once again, ladies and gentlemen. The big, big question. What is being done about John Verinder? I repeat. What is being done about John Verinder? Why is this enemy of democracy allowed to remain in this country? Why hasn't he been deported as this reporter has demanded time and time again? I tell you, ladies and gentlemen... Ah, uh, what's the matter, Chief? Don't you like those questions about John Verinder? You know darn well I don't. He's got a right to ask them. Sure he has, Ken. So has the rest of the world. Everyone knows Verinder's a foreign agent. We're morally certain that he's responsible for nine-tenths of the espionage going on in this country. And we haven't got one blessed shred of legal evidence to hang it on him. That's right. So what are we going to do about it? Well, we could beat a confession out of him. We could purge him. What? The chief, we're living in a country that believes in democratic rights. So I guess we've got to dig up some legal evidence. Well, what in blazes do you think we've been trying to do for two years? What's going to make things different now? At least we know now there's a man who worked with Verinder who's got the goods on him. Whose testimony can convict him. You mean William Cryle? Yeah. When I ran Kryle down three weeks ago, he promised to turn state's evidence, remember? Of course I do. And I remember that Kryle hasn't been seen anywhere since. He's the one who's been purged by Verinder Stooges. Pagan doesn't think so. Pagan? What's that cheap crook got to do with this? Oh, there's big money in military secrets, Chief. And nobody has an instinct for digging up dope about big money like Pagan. Oh. I put him on the payroll to see what he can find out about Kryle. Ken, you're throwing your money away. Why, I'll give you a hundred to one right now that that petty chiseler just milked you for expense money and you'll no. never even hear from him again. I'll bet that... Um. Yes? A telephone call from Mr. Thurston, sir. Hagon Zellschmidt's on the wire. Zellschmidt? Well, Chief, you still want to bet? So William Cryle skipped the country, Pagan. That's right, Mr. X. He was scared to pieces. He figured this Verinder character would have been bumped out if he told the government what he knows about him. So, so Cryle took himself a fast brush-out powder. And this um, friend of yours, he knows where Cryle's gone? That's what he told me, and he said he'd tell you. Uh, for a slight consideration, of course. Uh. See, si, see, si, Senor Thurston. This man whom you seek, this uh, Senor Kreil. Three weeks ago, he took an airplane passage to Guayaquil, Ecuador. Ecuador, hmm. 
That's in South America, Mr. Thurston. No. Oh, yeah, yeah. I guess this Kryl really wants to put a distance between himself and that Verinder. See, si, pig on. But it will do him no good, huh? What do you mean? This Signor Verinder. He knows that Signor Kryl has left the country. He has sent his most deadly killers to find him. Signor Kryl will never live to offer testimony to your government. Oh, he will if I can find him first. Verinder's killers will never allow you to do that, Signor. Who are these gunmen? What are their names? One would never suspect that through occupation for even a moment, senor. One of them is... Oh, I'm shot. I'm killed. Who? Oh. All right, Pagan. They're gone. They, they, they are? But, but why were they shooting at me? They were not. Huh? Oh. Oh, look, Mr. X. He's dead. Yeah. Veteran the stooges aren't wasting time. Come on. Where are we going? To the airport. Airport? We've got to win a race. To Guayaquil, Ecuador. something, Mr. Rex. The closer we get to where we're going, the farther away I think we should ought to be. A little late to think of that now. We'll be landing in a couple of hours. That's what I mean. What are we going to do in Guayaquil anyways? You've got friends there, haven't you? Sure. So what? So William Cryle's got to hide somewhere unless he wants Verinder's men to kill him. Maybe your friends can help us. What, again? B- boy, you don't care who gets bumped off by who. Pagan, the only hope of getting Cryle back alive is for us to find him first. But we don't even know who these stooges are, what they look like. <laughs> Maybe they're even flying with this airplane with that. I <laughs> beg your pardon, gentlemen. Oh, oh, dear, I didn't mean to startle you. Did I say something? Oh, dear. Oh, that's all right. My friend gets a bit nervous in airplanes. Oh, he does? Well, now, isn't that strange? Strange. Yes, I'm affected that way myself, particularly on long ocean flights. I, uh, uh, oh, but that wasn't what I wanted to speak to you about at all, now, was it? I don't know. You haven't said, Mr... Oh, yes, yes, of course. I'm Professor Savadell. Oh. I was wondering if you knew me. Uh, well, that is, I mean, you... You don't happen to be Professor Williams of the Botany Department at Washington University, do you? No, I'm afraid not, Professor. My name's Ken Thurston. And I'm Mr. Zelsch. Well... Uh, oh, dear. Oh, now, that's too bad. Huh? Well, I mean, I'm sorry I bothered you. I heard Professor Williams speak at a botanical convention some years ago. He's a very interesting speaker. Oh, very. He gave a masterful discourse on the fauna and flora of the Galapagos Islands. Oh, yes, he was masterful. Don't yes, well, you look a great deal like him, Mr. Thurston. When I first saw you, I thought... Uh, well, you understand, of course. Mm, well, yes, of I don't suppose you are interested in the Galapagos Islands yourself, Mr. Thurston. Should I be? Oh, yes, yes, indeed. Everyone should be. I've spent considerable time there in recent years collecting rare specimens. You'd be surprised at what can be found on some of its islands, such as uh, San Cristobal, Santa Maria... Desolation Island? Desolation Island? I don't think I've heard of that one. Oh, dear, no. No, 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 of course not. It was Professor Williams who mentioned it during that lecture, you know. And uh, you're not Professor Williams, are you? Get the load of this car. Well, sorry to bother you, gentlemen. I hope you'll meet again sometime. <laughs> Good day, Mr. Bell Smith. Good day, Professor Williams. Oh, I mean, Mr. Thurston. <laughs> well, good day, gentlemen. Goodbye, Professor Sabado. Hey. How do you like that guy? I do. Talk about having screws loose. I'm not so sure, Pagan. Not so sure? What about all that gallopopping island junk and thinking you were this Professor Williams character? That's what I mean. Huh? Only an hour ago, he asked the stewardess about me, and she told him who I am. I don't get it, Mr. X. Why are we letting our heels get cooled off here at the airport anyway? I'm looking for somebody, Pagan. You mean that Robert Kryle? No, some of the Verinder boys. Verinder boys? <laughs> but Kryle got here three weeks ago. They, they wouldn't be looking for anyone down here now, and, unless it was us. That's right. Uh, oh, well. Well, goodbye, Mr. Thurston. I just got time to get the plane back to Panama. Good luck, Pagan, and give my regards to Bruno Nasto. Sure, Mr. Thurston, be glad to... Bruno Nasto... Who is he? He used to be one of the Gestapo's hatchet men. So what's he got to do with me going to Panama? That's what I was wondering. 
He's standing over there near the Panama plane watching us. <laughs> well, the second thought, Mr. Thurston, I... I uh, oh, couldn't you leave you like, up a couple of trees or two? After all, you're, you're liable to need me around to protect you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, oh, well, so there you are. Well, I've been looking for you, Professor. Well, uh, oh, I mean, Mr. Thurston. <laughs> yes, I was looking for you. That's so, uh, Professor Sarkozy. Oh, yes, yes, indeed. I wish to say goodbye before you left. For the Galapagos Islands. Uh, oh, my, 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 my. I mean, before I left. Yes, I wish to see you back. Yes. Um, Mighty nice of you, Professor. Have a good trip. Thank you, thank you. I am certain that I shall. I'm most anxious to study some new specimens of the order uh, Chelonia. Mm? Uh, uh, turtles, you know. Yes, turtles. Uh. The waters of the Galapagos. Oh, my. My, huh? my, my heart. I. Go, go. Oh, that's a heart attack. What? Here, pig on takeover. Yeah. She is taken to Providencia Hospital. Sure, but but where are you going? To follow the man who did this to him. What? The professor just took a good good look at Bruno Nastal. <laughs> Wake up. Oh, it's you, Mr. Thurston. Mm. Hey, how come you got here to the hospital so soon? Couldn't you follow that nasty old guy? I followed him to a little apartment out in the suburbs. So what? So it's time to have a little talk with the professor. But, but why should the professor know anything about it? The name on the apartment door was Victor Savadell. Oh. Let's go in. Boy, it's cold in here. Why have they got that window wide open? The window doesn't bother me as much as the bed. The bed? Hey. Yes. The professor's gone. Here, senor. I might ask you the same, senorita. So long as I have a gun, you will answer the questions, not ask them. What are you doing here? I'm looking for Professor Savadell. Savadell? This is his apartment, isn't it? Who are you? My name's Ken Thurston. What's yours? Leave his apartment, senor. At once, before I call the police. You sure you want them here? Why not? Oh, I don't know. They might be curious as to what you're doing here, too. I can assure you, Senor Thurston, they will be entirely satisfied with my explanation. And it would be no crime to kill you when you're attempting to break into my home. Now leave at once or I shall... What was that? I'll take that gun. Uh, uh, Thanks. Now, who's in that closet? What? That's where the noise came from. I don't know, Senor. Stand here a minute. All right, get... Senor... Yeah. Who? Who is he? His name was Bruno Nastro. Oh. You want to talk now, or do you still think it's safe to call the police? Senor, I know that you are looking for William Kryle because his evidence will convict John Verinder of being a dangerous alien agent. How do you know all this? Very simple, Senor. I know it because I... Look out! <laughs> Senor Thurston? It's all right. He's gone. Why? Why was he trying to kill you? He wasn't. What? He's trying to kill you. Me? You saw him. Do you know who he was? Yep. A harmless old professor. Name of Savadell. <laughs> We'll continue with The Man Called X in just a moment. Every day you hear more and more about an incredibly fast way to relieve the pains of headache, neuritis, and neuralgia. It's Anacin, A-N-A-C-I-N. Now the reason Anacin is so wonderfully fast-acting and effective is this. Anacin is like a doctor's prescription, that is... Anison contains not just one, but a combination of medically proven active ingredients in easy-to-take tablet form. Thousands of people have received envelopes containing Anison tablets from their own dentist or physician, and in this way discovered the incredibly fast relief Anison brings from pains of headache, neuritis, or neuralgia. 
So the next time a headache strikes, take Anison. A-N-A-C-I-N. Anison in handy boxes of 12 and 30. Economical family size bottles of 50 and 100. Ask for Anison at any drug counter. Now, Act Two of The Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall with Leon Belasco as Pagan Zellschmidt. The United States is on trial in the eyes of the world for failure to deport John Verinder, international spy and espionage agent. But only one man possesses evidence to convict him a man by the name of William Cryle, who has fled to Ecuador. Ken Thurston, knowing Verinder's agents are out to silence Kryle, has followed him to Guayaquil. Now Ken is in a Professor Sabadell's apartment talking to a mysterious woman he found there. The woman who was just shot at by the professor himself. So your name's Carla Reiner? Si. That is so, Senor Thurston. How come you're mixed up in this? How do you know about me and about William Kryle? I have made it my business to know many things about many people in many places. I have found it to be a most profitable vocation. How about that dead man there in your closet, Bunanasto? He's the one who has informed Verinder's agent as to the present whereabouts of William Kryle. Then th- they know where Kryle is? See, si. Do you? No, though I'd hope to coax the information out of Nashtol. Why? So I could sell it to you. <laughs> That's frank enough. I told you that was my business. Yeah. So what happened to Nashtol? He told me to meet him here. When I arrived, I found him lying on the floor, dead. It was then you rang the bell. I had just enough time to prop him up in the closet before you walked in. Uh. You... You don't believe me. Go on. Well, you have the proof in your hand. If you will examine my gun, you will find it's not been fired. I know. I've checked. Then you will let me go. I'd still like to know why Sabadell wanted to kill you. So would I, senor. But unfortunately, I do not. Well? All right, Miss Liner. You can go. That house anyways, Mr. Rex. It's dark already. Pagan, did you see the woman who left the apartment just before I did? The one who's walking down the street now? Did I see her? <laughs> Never mind that. How'd you like to follow her? Are you kidding? <laughs> see you back at the hotel, Mr. Rex, later. <laughs> Amigo. <laughs> Perdone usted, amigo. You have una Lucifero. Huh? Oh, oh, a match. Oh, look, my oldest, dearest friend. I'm, I'm in a hurry. See? They... <laughs> oh. Oh. What, what was that? That is but Senor Satan, amigo. Senor Satan? What kind of a name is that for, for an elephant? Elephant, amigo. Hey, no, no. She's what you call a hound of blood. See, that is what you call her. <laughs> you call her that? I got my own names for her. Look, like I said before, and I'm in a hurry. You know how these ladies don't like to keep me waiting. <laughs> well, there is no hurry, amigo. Huh? The senorita will not go away from you. Look, she is even now getting aboard that big, how do you call it, speedboat at the docks. Hey. What do you know? She, she is. See, si, like I told you. So you give me the match, eh? And then you go. And that's all the dope I have, Ken. Not much to go on, but maybe it'll help. It does, Chief. Plenty. What's your next move? As soon as Pagon gets back, we start out to pick up William Cryle. And that's all I know, Mr. X. Honest. After this big guy with that bloodhound conked me, I I didn't know nothing else. What happened to Carl Reiner and the speedboat? Who knows? When I got my conscience back, they were gone. Uh. Okay, Pagon, let's go. Go? Go where? 
I have to go to a chemist. Then we'll see if we can borrow a seaplane from the government of Ecuador. Huh? What are we going to do all that for? What else would you do if you wanted to hunt a turtle on the Galapagos Islands? Huh? There it is, Pagan. Desolation Island. That? You mean we're going to land down there? That's right. But... But there's nothing on that place but, but rocks and, and sand and rocks. Oh, I think we'll find some living things down there, too. Like what? Like birds, lizards, turtles, William Cryle. Mr. X. No, th- this is the end. I'm absolutely not walking anymore. One bleeding step. I'm kaput, finished, besides which I quit. That guy, Cryle, he just isn't in this place. We'll find him, Pega. <laughs> but, but what makes you think he's on here anyways? Because he's standing on top of that rock wall behind you. What kind of a reasoning is that? Believe me, Mr. X, he's... Standing behind me. Don't move. Huh? Either of you. I've got you covered. Uh, it's obvious. Who are you? What do you want here? My name's Thurston. And we had to take you back to the States. That's what I thought. Berender sent you after me, didn't he? Berender sent you. You're wrong, Cryle. I'm on government business. Government? Yeah. I want you to go back to testify against Berender. Go back? <laughs> you... You must be crazy. Even if Berender didn't send you, he's got men looking for me. Looking everywhere. I wouldn't stand a chance if I went back. I, I can't go back. I can't. Uh, it finally got you, didn't it, Cryle? Got to me? What are you talking about? You picked the loneliest spot on earth to hide in. But you've learned that it doesn't work. It never does. You can't hide from yourself. How did you find me, Thurston? Professor Savadell. Savadell? Yeah. But he didn't tell you nothing about Cryle, Mr. Thurston? No, but the chief did. Savadell and Cryle were old friends. What was he going to do, Cryle? Bring out some supplies for you? Never mind all that, Thurston. The only important thing is what happens to me now. You haven't much choice. We found you. It's only a question of time before Verinder's men find you, too. You take it from there. No. There must be another answer. There must be. (gasps) Mr. Rex. Yeah. Sounds like your bloodhound friend. Bloodhound? What are you talking about? What's going on? Let's climb up here and take a look. Look, it's him, the big guy with the dog. And that Carla Reiner's with him. Savadell. They've got his hands tied. They're pushing him in front of them for a shield. That's right, Cryo. Won't take long for that hound to track you down. And you can't shoot unless you want to kill Savadell, too. But, but we got to do something. They'll kill us, murder us. What can we do, Mr. Rex? That's something Cryo will have to decide. The, I? That's right. The choice is up to you. Whether you go back to the States as a witness against Verinder or as a corpse. So this is the way that dog of yours will follow any trail, huh? Can't you see the fool has lost the scent? And I tell you, senorita, you will find it again. This dog can follow anyone anywhere. Then why does he not do it? Look at him, acting as though Kryle has spread wings and flown away. Yes, but I, I told you Mr. Kryle is not on this island. He is not here. He Shut don't... your mouth, you idiot. We know he is here. And when we have found him and killed him, then it will be your turn. Oh, if I had only managed to shoot you back at the apartment. Now there is nothing that can be done. Don't be too sure Wait. about that, Professor. Hey, who is that? Don't, Don't bother bo- turning round. That's right, my amigo friend. The Professor is in front. There's nothing behind us but us and our guns. So, it is you, Thurston. That's right, Carla. The dog. He was the cause of this. Losing the trail, letting you sneak up behind us. Don't blame the dog, Carla. I used the old trick of spreading blood plasma and cocaine across the trail. But you used an old trick, too. When you killed Nastor. 
Are you mad, Thurston? You checked my gun. It hadn't been fired. That's what I mean. After you left, I found the gun you'd, over, you'd rarely use. Nasto's gun. Jala. All right, then, Look Vigo. Ah! <sighs> Thanks, Cryo. Bill, then you're all right. Mr. Thurston found you first. That's right, Savitel. Yes. He found me. But uh, I, I suppose you haven't... Uh, well, I mean, you, you still haven't changed your mind about, uh, about... Uh... You're wrong, Professor. Cryo's going back with us to testify against Verinder. He... he is? You... you mean you really persuaded him to... No, I didn't persuade him. I didn't have to. He learned his lesson. The lesson that all of us had better learn. We've only got two choices to make these days. To stand up against the villains of the world or... Try to run away. And the earth's just too small to hide on. Our star, Herbert Marshall, will return in just a moment. Here's a word from RCA Victor. Fill your life with a new magic world of fun. Enjoy yourself. Have a Highland fling. Yes, that's just what it is when you and your family start enjoying RCA Victor's new 17-inch television console, the Highland. It's fun, it's fine, and it'll be the favorite of your family. That's right, the most famous name in home entertainment, RCA Victor, now brings you the best in 17-inch television with the new Highland console. There's a lot we can say about the Highland, but you just have to see it with its remarkable pictures, clear, bright, and steady. Its distinctive console cabinet, beautifully styled, beautifully finished, and priced to fit your family budget. Then you'll know why this is million-proof television. Now over two million American families have tried, tested, and purchased RCA Victor television. Let your family in for a Highland fling with RCA Victor's exciting new Highland television console. See it at your RCA Victor dealers tomorrow. Here is our star, Mr. Herbert Marshall. Thanks for being with us. And I think you'd like to know that in tonight's cast were Lillian Bayef, Will Wright, Howard McNear, Polly Bear, Paul Feast, and Robert Boone. Next week, our story takes Ken to Ireland on a real puzzler called the Blue Unicorn. But believe me, it has nothing to do with animals, despite the fact that, as usual, uh, Leon Velasco will be along as Pagan Zellschmidt. So join us, won't you, when next I return as the man called X. Good night. The Man Called X is a Saturday night feature on NBC's five-show festival of comedy, music, mystery, and drama. Brought to you by the makers of Anison for fast relief from pain of headache, neuritis, neuralgia, and by RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, first in television. The Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall, is a J. Richard Kennedy production with music composed and conducted by Felix Mills. Tonight's story was written by Sidney Marshall and Maurice Zim. All characters and incidents on this program are fictitious, and any resemblance to actual characters or incidents is purely coincidental. Be sure to listen tomorrow evening for The Big Show with Tallulah Bankhead and a great parade of stars, the Sunday night feature of NBC's All-Star Festival. And until next week, same time and same station, this is Jack Latham saying good night for The Man Called X. Tomorrow, hear Tallulah's Big Show. Now it's your hit parade on NBC.